All right, so it's 2023 and I decided that uh, I would start developing my own film. I think I started film photography back in like 2019, 2020. Um, and it was just before the pandemic. And for me, I just never really wanted to do the development process. So it was always kind of a barrier. I always wanted to get into film, but I always thought, oh, I, I need a dark room, I need chemicals, I need all this extra stuff. My friend Dylan also wanted to get into film photography, but he also wanted to do the development. So I was like, all right, cool. So he's been developing my film for the last like two years. We had pretty good results with the uh, Cinestill C41 Color Simplified Development Kit. So I went with the powder kit, but I'm sure the liquid kit is also fine too. The kit includes the Chem, two 1000 milliliter pitchers, two 1000 milliliter accordion collapsible storage bottles. I opted for the Patterson Universal Developing Tank, which included two film reels. And lastly, I ended up getting the TCS 1000, which I'm gonna just call a sous vide going forward. I already personally had a dark bag and a film retriever that was given to me from the same man who let me start the Negative Rescue Project. I'll link to that in the description. I also bought a pack of clips to hang the film, and I bought a storage bin that also doubles as my water bath. Okay, so the things you need in your so the things you need in your dark bag are the dark canister. Gonna put that in there. A film reel, and then the rest of the dark canister. I've opted to already pull the film partially out of the canister. That way, then it's easier for me to cut once I get to the end of it. And then also a pair of scissors. The goal being, once you get it in here. This is a mess and that'll be fun to sort out in the dark. You zip up the inner bag, zip up the outer bag, you jumble it all around so that it's harder to find. I'll make sure, nope, looks dark in there. So you gotta put your arms in here, this is fun. <laughs> All right, so what I have in here, right now I have the film roller. You have to line up two nubs. Let's see here, make sure you have the right ones. There's a big nub and a small nub. Do, do, do. So I have a scissors. You just gotta cut off the film lead. Hopefully I do this all right. Sounded like I didn't kill anybody. And then you line up the two nubs, Let's see, and then you pull out the film onto the roller. Oh, look at that, I did that first try. I did practice before this on a very old roll, and now I'm just moving back and forth, getting the roll onto the roller, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure some people are mad at me for not wearing gloves, but you know what, there's always room for improvement. So I believe I hit the end of the film roll. Yep, it won't come out any further. What we're gonna do is go right to the end of the roll and you just line it up. And hopefully I didn't cut off the last shot. Just roll it up a little bit more until it doesn't go anywhere else. All right, now you need the spool. I think that's what it's called. I'll correct myself later. You put that in the canister. Here are that guy. Hop on. We all heard that click. And then, I'm just gonna put the lid on. I don't even think I need the lid on it right now. There we go. My hands are out. Moment of truth. Hopefully I didn't fuck up my film. Otherwise I just shoot another roll. There we go. Scissors. And there's a film canister. Oh yeah, the end of the film and the empty canister. All right, let me get rid of this part. Fold that guy up, it's covered in cat hair. My cats used to lay on this because they used to never use this. There we go. Next, we have to do chemicals. Let's see, so the chemicals come with the bath, and then we have part A and part B, bleach and fix bath. 
first one we're gonna do is the bath. We're gonna use distilled water because my water is really hard. And we need 600 milliliters. Do, do, do. Oh. I probably could have done this in front of the camera so that you guys could have saw it, but that's what that looks like. It says use a clean plastic stir stick. I have a drink stir stick. I know I could use this technically, but I'm lazy and I don't want to have to continually clean this all the time. You have to clean it with each batch of chemicals and I'm lazy. So while circulating, add the contents of the packet marked color developer, stir well. While circulating, top off the solution with water to make a thousand milliliters. Probably shouldn't breathe that in. <laughs> Stir a bunch. And it says while circulating, top it off to be a thousand. I hope I'm doing this right. It seems like a lot of water to add. I believe that to be well mixed. We're gonna move this. We're gonna put this here. It looks pretty well mixed. Next thing is, try not to pour it all over my counter and then pour it into this container. There's that, we'll set that off to the side. We will squish this down to get out a lot of air. Oop, that seems spilling. Get out the air for now. Rinse my hands off, it's chemicals. All right, for the next one, same process. 600 milliliters of water into a clear glass or plastic pitcher, which is this. <laughs> While circulating, add part A. Stir well. All right, Ooh, well, if you could actually rip this correctly. Looks like we're using a scissors. Bad at my job. Oh, still bad at my job. All right. So while stirring, add part A. Stir well, and it says pour solution into a thousand milliliter storage bottle. Uh, I might have could have maybe mixed it a little bit better. Add the contents of the packet marked part B, combining to create an endothermic reaction for five minutes. Pour solution back and forth between the pitcher and the bottle while circulating. Top off. Sounds like this is terribly, this is bad to rip. All right, let's try it again. Looks like sand. And it looks like they're just adding it into the container and then pouring it back. So let's try that. It's kind of like being a chemist. It says pour this back into here. All right. Definitely changed colors. And pour this back into here. So I set a timer, definitely didn't do that. Let's set a timer for so it's five minutes, we're gonna do four minutes because I've already been doing this for like a minute. Go back. Slower pour maybe. I did notice there was quite a bit of what I'll call sludge at the bottom. So let's make sure we stir that up while circulating top off with water. All right, well, we'll get there in just a second. I wanna do this one more time. Who knows, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Sound off in the comments. Pour this back. Yeah, it just looks like blood. It's kind of gross. Let's add some water in here. So we're down to a minute. Get it to about 800. Tell me if I'm doing something wrong. Let's see. I wonder why they're going back and forth when I could just like shake it in the bottle, but maybe I don't understand chemistry. And let's add just enough to get us to a thousand now. Since we're near the end, give it a nice stir. Let's just pour it back one more time. Perfect. Squish out some air. Ah. 
And there you go. That is chemicals. I'm going to be using the sous vide. I need to get the water up to temp. I could have been doing that the entire time I was mixing chemicals, but look at me now. My water also might be a little high. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, it's a little high. We'll get, we'll remove some of that. Yeah, it's a lot of water. This is my first time doing this, so I mean, don't blame me. So with this, it does a beep. Tell me it's plugged in. And now it's gonna start. So the standard processing steps for rotation are inversion methods. This is for processing with the Patterson tank or the Jobo one, which I didn't get that one. I, I liked this one. It's at 77 now, so I'll be back. All right. So first we start with the developer. Let's hope my container is still late proof. It's a terrible time to test it now. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is grab the developer. Calm down. All right, we're gonna set that there. Timer it says to do it for three and a half minutes. All right, so we're gonna open this up. All right, so it's, oh gosh. Let's dump all this in here as fast as we can. And then it says agitate. Well, that's tough. Continuously for 10 seconds. My fingertips are just slightly in the thing, which means I should probably wear gloves. In the heat of the moment, I completely forgot that every video and every time I've watched this, you only add the amount of chem that you need. You only need to go to like the top of the film reels and then you don't add any more. For some reason, my brain was like, it's all gotta go in. So for some reason, I decided to do that. And then, Back there. For lifts or inversion cycles. Every 30 seconds. I think I can just keep doing this. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. All right, do for the next 30 seconds. Oh. Probably leave this here. All right. Two. Three. Dismiss. I will note that I did hook up the sous vide, but I didn't take the time for my first development to learn how to use it. So I still use my phone as a timer. I'm stupid because the timer is built into the sous vide. It has two times on it. It has a three minute, 30 second timer, and then it has an eight minute timer. One's for the development, one's for the fixer. Uh, yeah. So the next thing we're gonna do, jump this. Back into here, this boy has changed colors. Pour this guy back into here. And we just need this guy next. And it says, bleach lash fix, eight minutes. Same as above. Agitate for 10 seconds and then every 30. Let's get this in here. I almost feel like I have too much chem. I could be wrong. All right. This is the part where I think I might need gloves, but we'll see. Cool. Give me one glove. Probably off on time now. That's fine. <laughs> Wet hands and gloves. Well, we'll call this a glove. Don't judge me. Two, three, four. I probably shouldn't have added as much chem into this as I did. I should have only filled to the level where it was all in there. I dumped all of it in. Notes for next time. Is this might overdevelop, I think. I don't even know. Definitely should let that dry. <laughs> we'll find out soon. I still have three minutes. I definitely didn't have to put this much in there. Whoops. All 
I could just pour some of the developer back out, but I don't know what is and isn't allowed. I'm new. We have one left. And I'm going to dump all that back in here so I can dump it in there and then we'll give it a rinse. And then we'll go to final rinse with distilled water, I believe. All right, one, two, four. So that's done. I'm going to take this. We're just going to remove all that. Get rid of this chemical. We're going to take this. It should be developed by now. Remove all this. Just make sure. Oh yeah. We'll put this back in here. So next time, I won't do nearly as much developer or the other guy. And we will seal it to there. Seal it off. Let the other guy rinse. Clean up my mess. We got 15 seconds left. The last thing I want to do is just do a last rinse with distilled water. Do that. Shut this off. And then I just want to do... Just a little bit here. And get one. should be allowed to take this out. And hopefully I didn't fuck it up. Hey, there are photos. They exist. Oh, there we go. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh. Ooh. I'm just gonna squeegee the water off. Down fingers. And then we're gonna let it dry. I got photos! There's that. Then I'll clip it on the other side too. Alright. We will reconvene and see what these look like in a few hours. Gotta hang them up. So these are some of my favorite shots from the development. I was able to tour this like old kind of abandoned building in downtown and I really liked all the doors, I liked all the weird chairs hanging out, the weird rugs, the weird phones. There were a lot of areas that were lit very dimly or they were in heavy shadow so I didn't really do myself any favors here. So yeah I shot inside and I shot outside and I really wanted to just try and get textures, see the difference in different lighting. Overall though, I think the development went pretty well. I, uh, I'm just glad I got photos. I know there are some things I need to tweak and fix, but I will be adjusting those in future developments, not adding all of the chem to my tank. Also using the inversion method, I do want to see the difference. The inversion method is the method I've always seen, but I've always wondered why no one uses the stick. So for me, I kind of thought this would be kind of fun to try out. I knew I was going to get something regardless and I, I did get something so let me know in the comments what else I did wrong. 2023 is going to be a fun year. I already know I'm doing this color development. I'm also going to be working with the mono bath for black and white. I'm also starting to do 4x5 film. I'm excited to review some other cameras, some other things um, that I have going on. So uh, stay tuned for those.